Here I want to present one of my favorite examples of a strange vector space. And what I mean by a strange vector space is maybe a vector space that you wouldn't think of initially when you're thinking about vectors, or also a vector space that you wouldn't see in natural circumstances. But it's still a set with two operations that satisfy the axioms that define a vector space. Speaking of the definition of a vector space, let's start by recalling that definition. So we'll just look at real vector spaces, that is vector spaces over the real numbers, although you can do this over any field, but I'll let you guys look into that more if you want to. So a set V is a real vector space. If there is an operation, which we'll call plus, I've colored it yellow just to distinguish it from the addition within the real numbers. This is the addition within the vector space. And so this allows you to take two vectors and add them or do vector addition. And I wanna be really careful to point out that this is vector addition, which might take on several different forms. So this vector addition has to satisfy four axioms. And these four axioms actually make the vector space an abelian group under this vector addition. But again, I'll let you guys look at that if you need to. Okay, and those four axioms are built out of three vectors. So I'll call them U, V, and W, which are in V. And that says that if you do vector addition of U plus V and then add W, it's the same as grouping it this other way. So in other words, we've got an associativity axiom for vector addition. Next, we have that vector addition is commutative. So U plus V is the same thing as V plus U. Next, we've got an identity. So in other words, there's a zero vector, which we'll call zero, with the property that V vector added to zero equals V. Next, we've got additive inverses. So in other words, for every V that we have up here, there is an element which we'll call minus V, where V plus minus V equals zero, where this is read to be the zero vector but there's more structure to a vector space than just the additive structure. There's a scalar multiplication structure as well. And that has to do with the underlying field, in this case, the real numbers like we pointed out earlier. So I'll denote that scalar multiplication operation by this faint yellow dot. Generally, you don't write a dot for this because that's reserved for the dot product, but just so that we have a symbol, I'll make it a faint yellow dot. And so this has two inputs, a real number and a vector, and one output, which is a vector. So that allows you to scale a vector, if you will. And here's where it's nice that we used a different color for vector addition versus real number addition. So if you take two real numbers, A and B, then you add them and do scalar multiplication into a vector V, it's the same thing as doing that scalar multiplication separately and then doing vector addition. So that's something I really want to underscore here on both sides of this equation. Over here on the left, we have scalar addition. We're adding two numbers. And over here, we're adding two vectors. That's why I use these two different colors. So this is like a distributive rule. We have another distributive rule like this. And so that says that A multiplied to V plus W is the same thing as AV plus AW. And furthermore, there's one more axiom that has to do with the associativity of the scalar multiplication with regular multiplication. I'll let you guys look that up and point it in the comments. It's not super necessary to get a grasp of our crazy example though. Okay, so before we look at our crazy example, let's look at a couple of basic examples. So the first basic example is R2. So in other words, two-dimensional vectors. So we'll denote those as columns. So we've got x, y, where x and y are real numbers. So in order to endow this with the structure of a vector space, we need to define a vector addition and a scalar multiplication and check that all of these things are satisfied. We won't check that all of these things are satisfied, but we will define those two operations. So let's say we've got x1, y1, and x2, y2. So those are two vectors in our vector space, and we want to do vector addition. 
So by vector addition, I mean this yellow addition. So we can define that component wise. So that'll be x1 plus x2 and then y1 plus y2. Where here I am careful to notice that this addition happening component wise is real number addition, whereas this was vector addition. Now, what about scalar multiplication? Well, if we had C onto the vector x, y, so maybe I'll put like a faint yellow dot there to show that we're doing scalar multiplication. That's going to be the same thing as C, x, C, y. Or maybe I'll put a faint white dot here to say that that is real number multiplication. Then you can check that all of these axioms are satisfied given those two operations, and that's pretty easy to do. So our next basic example is the polynomial algebra, the polynomial vector space. So here we've got all things of the form a0 plus a1x all the way up to a n x to the n, where a i are real numbers and n is bigger than or equal to zero. And x is an indeterminate or a formal variable, so it won't take on any value. What's the vector addition and the scalar multiplication here? Well, we can write it down pretty easily. So let's say we have a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. Let's just say we have a quadratic polynomial, and we're trying to add that to another quadratic polynomial. I'll call it b1, or sorry, b0 plus b1x plus b2x squared. Then what do we get? Well, we just combine like terms, if you will. So this will give us a0 plus b0 plus a1 plus b1 times x plus a2 plus b2 times x squared. So it's like the component addition that happened up here. It's just down here we have a little bit larger of a space. It's an, in fact, infinite dimensional vector space. So just to re reiterate what's going on here, we have this yellow plus here to be the addition that's defining our vector addition, but it's defined in terms of this real number addition. And you might say, well, what about these pluses that are parts of the polynomials? Well, you can almost think about those as like just parts of the polynomials. Those are not operations. So maybe we should put those in a different color if we wanted to. So that would be everything here. So now that we're kind of warmed up with some basic examples, let's look at our crazy example. So we've been building up to this crazy example. You might say, well, why do we want a crazy example of a vector space if it's not really used in any applications? Well, I think it's interesting to push the definition as far as possible. You learn about the limitations of that definition as well as just really understanding everything that that definition implies and does not imply. So on to our crazy example. So let's set V, the would-be vector space, equal to the positive real numbers. So we could write that in interval notation as the interval from zero to infinity. Then our vector addition and scalar multiplication are defined as follows. So if we take V and W in our vector space, in other words, they're positive real numbers, we define their vector addition to be just the product of those two numbers. And here's where it's really nice that we use these two different colors for vector addition and scalar multiplication versus like our normal arithmetic operations. So here, like I said, this is our vector addition operation. That's just our normal multiplication over there. Then scalar multiplication is defined as exponentiation. So there we've got C scalar multiplied into V is the same thing as V to the C. Okay, so now let's check some of these axioms are satisfied. Maybe we'll check this axiom first, and then we'll just kind of go down the list, skipping some and doing others. First, for our associativity axiom, so let's look at U, V, W, and then let's maybe put our yellow pluses in here and do our grouping as necessary. Okay, so let's notice that that is U, V, and then plus W, where that's our vector addition. So here I did our vector addition on U and V, which is just regular multiplication. So that gives me U times V times W. 
again, by the definition of our vector addition here, but we know that multiplication is associative in the real numbers, so that gives us u, v, w, but then we can pull that apart again to u plus v plus w, where all of those are vector addition. And so that kind of finishes this equality, which we wanted to show for this rule right here. Okay, so now let's find an additive inverse. So this is gonna be a number that when we do vector addition here, we get the same number. But since our vector addition is just normal multiplication, then that number will be the number one. So we've gotta make sure the number one is in our vector space, but it is because one is a positive real number. So maybe we'll just write that um, as this kind of observation. One vector added into V is the same thing as one times V, which is the same thing as V. So we're good to go there. And then what about additive inverses? Well, maybe we'll make the observation if v is an element from the interval zero to infinity, then one over v is also an element from the interval zero to infinity. And now if we do our crazy vector addition, which is this yellow addition of v plus one over v, we get v times one over v, which is just the number one, which was our zero vector, if you will. So you can see it's kind of like a mind game keeping track of what's happening formally versus what's happening intuitively. A lot of the roles are being like reversed here. So now let's maybe check one of these down here. Maybe this next to last one is the most interesting. So let's see what we get. So if we do A plus B and then scalar multiplied into V. So this is the addition of real numbers here. So that's why we have a white addition there. Okay, well, let's notice that by definition, that is V to the A plus B, by the definition of our scalar multiplication. But we know something about exponent rules. That is the same thing as V to the A times V to the B. But that is exactly V to the A with our vector addition of V to the B because our yellow vector addition is just regular multiplication. And then we can finish that off. So that's A scalar multiplied into V and then B scalar multiplied into V with this yellow scalar, scalar multiplication and then with this yellow vector addition. So notice that is what we wanted to build for this to be satisfied. And then I'll let you check the other details. So again, I think this is a nice example. I give it to most of my linear algebra classes when I'm teaching that class. And furthermore, if you have any other crazy examples of vector spaces, what I mean by crazy is something that doesn't seem like it should satisfy all the axioms of a vector space or another algebraic structure, if you will, be sure to post it in the comments. And that's a good place to stop.